So welcome to this course on the fundamentals of reinforced concrete design to Eurocode 2. The aim of this course is to give you a really solid understanding of the mechanical models that characterize reinforced concrete and its resistance to shear and flexure. We're also going to introduce uh, Eurocode 2 and in particular the different models and techniques that are prescribed by Eurocode 2 for the analysis and design of reinforced concrete structures. So in this first section of the course, we really just, it's a short section, we really just deal with some housekeeping issues. We'll start the course proper uh, in section two. So in section two, um, we're going to start talking about actions on structures and limit state design. So before we design any structure, we've got to work out what are the design loads, or what are the loads that we're going to design it for. Now, Eurocodes, the Eurocode system has a very prescriptive way of determining what the design loads on a structure should be. And we need to uh, make ourselves familiar with this and with these processes. We're also going to be coming into contact with a new concept known as limit state design. Now, this is something that applies to the design of structures in any material. And obviously, we're going to focus on it in the context of reinforced concrete design here. Now, in section three, we get into probably what is the, the real meat or the real uh, central part of this course, which is all around bending resistance of reinforced concrete. This is probably um, one of the first or most fundamental things that you will learn uh, when you're studying reinforced concrete is how does the concrete itself and the reinforcing steel within that concrete, how do they act compositely together uh, to generate a moment of resistance um, to resist external loading on the structure. So we're going to spend quite a bit of time getting a really good understanding um, of this composite action and the mechanical models that we use to describe this flexural resistance. So we're going to work our way through a number of worked examples. We'll cover the very standard, very basic singly reinforced concrete sections. We'll look at doubly reinforced sections. We will also look at over reinforced sections and T sections or flanged uh, concrete sections. And examples are going to be used extensively in this section to, uh, to take the theory and really just put it into context for us. Uh, the next section, section four, is all about the shear resistance of concrete. So once you've designed a concrete, uh, let's say a concrete beam, um, to resist the bending moment that develops, you've got to then turn your attention to shear and make sure that the, the beam or whatever structural element that you're designing is capable of resisting the shear stresses that develop within it. So that's what we're going to focus on in section four. Now, in particular, we're going to introduce a really fundamental model of shear resistance known as the variable strut inclination model. Now, this is a model that is... Um, you know, prescribed by Eurocode 2 and it's it's detailed um, within Eurocode 2 and we're going to see very clearly how we can use that model um, to ultimately determine what the shear reinforcement within our concrete uh, beam shall be. So that brings me on to the other point which is we're, we're going to be focusing in this course predominantly on the design of beams. Now much of what we do, in fact, in fact, the vast, vast majority of what we do will apply beyond just a study of beams. Um, but we're going to use concrete beams as a, as a vehicle uh, to base most of our or all of our examples on. But, but rest assured that what you learn in terms of flexural resistance and shear resistance will apply well beyond just the, the analysis of beams. It'll apply into the analysis of slabs, columns and all that other good stuff that we'll get to eventually. Now, the final section of the course is um, is a Python-based section. Now, this is very much optional. Um, if you are taking this course and Python is just not your thing, you're not interested in it, you just want to focus on reinforced concrete design, that's absolutely fine. The first four sections of the course are all focused on reinforced concrete. But... I certainly think that there is merit in in, in whenever, whenever it makes sense um, to try and take our calculations, our manual calculations, and try and automate them. I mean, if you're uh, an, an engineer, practicing engineer, or a student engineer, um, you'll almost certainly at some point have tried to automate some of your calculations in a spreadsheet. Well, Python is just taking that one step further. Um, and you'll see in section five, um, when we try and take some of our calculations and, and encode them within some Python scripts, you'll see that a programming approach is is way more versatile than trying to do this within a spreadsheet. So if you have an open mind and Python, you, you know, you're not familiar with Python, well, sort of go into section five with an open mind and, and see, you, you might find that you get some real value out of it. Um, so how section five will be structured is we will... We will look back at section three, the flexural section of the course, and what we're going to do is implement the worked examples. We're going to take the worked examples we covered in section three, and we're going to write Python scripts, two Python scripts basically, that will be able to 
basically automate those calculations for us. Now, the main aim here in section five is not really to have you finishing up this course with, you know, the all singing, all dancing, complete um, concrete analysis uh, script. Um, really, the objective is to basically say, well, look, we, we, we can do this. We can we can take some calculations. We can automate them by just using very simple programming um, techniques and structures. Um, and the idea really is that you see what's possible here and um, you take you take that and you then automate some of your own calculations or indeed automate more of the calculations within the course. So really it's kind of a taster um, to kind of make you very aware of what's possible by automating your calculations or, or combining programming with sort of traditional engineering calculations. So that's the plan for the course. In the next lecture, I'll just briefly talk about the ideal candidate for this course um, and who really this course is aimed at. So that's just going to be a very short word for me um, and we'll crack on from there. So I'll see you in the next lecture.